This presentation is for the National Science Olympiad uh, Middle School Astronomy event. Um, solar system is the topic, and specifically this year it is on planetary science. Uh, this is for the 2015 competition at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln, Nebraska on May 15th and 16th, 2015. And one thing that you will notice as we go along is that the content has not changed from last year. I am Donna Young. I work for the Chandra Education and Public Outreach Office in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I am the National Event Supervisor for the Astronomy event. The National Event Supervisor for this event is Dusty Schroeder, who is now working at JPL at Caltech in the radar science and uh, engineering section. And the both and the Chan, both JPL will start uh, also supporting this event. Chandra also has been supporting this event for several years and the webinars will be posted on the event on, on, on the uh, Chandra website and as well as a lot there's already a lot of content up there about stellar evolution and very little though for planetary science because Chandra does not image very much within the solar system it's just everything far far away the American Association of Variable Star Observers, AAVSO, website also supports the um, astronomy of both high school and middle school, and there are a lot of things posted there. If you go to the Variable Star menu and go down to Educational Materials and down to Science Olympiad, you will see listed by year um, the events, the previous events from previous years, uh, links to the webinars on the Chandra website and also there is a flashcard set for the 2015 competition that can be downloaded and this PowerPoint will be there also so and there are also materials educational materials in the variable star astronomy section which also have relevance to um, the content for the middle school competition exact same content as last year because la or I should say this year for the 2014 competition because the content was new uh, seemed to make a lot of coaches and teams nervous more coaches than teams were nervous uh, it was decided that the content would remain exactly the same however I have to give you a warning that the scores in spite of people being nervous about this event, the scores were really, really good. There were a lot of very high scoring teams, and therefore I would expect a 2015 competition to have some of those questions much more difficult. The parameters have not changed at all. Each team, each team can bring two eight and a half by 11 double-sided pages of information from any or any source to bring to the competition with them and there they can use the notes for all parts of the competition again the there is basically two different sections for this competition the first is identification the second is interpretation identification of the features and landforms associated with these five groups of objects Mars Europa Enceladus uh, Iapetus, Titan, Triton series, and the comets and the two locations of cometary materials, and also knowledge about the history and the process of water, water movement, water formation, icy material uh, that have moved or formed, and how they're related to the, f to the surface features on these objects. In the uh, interpretive task, section here the second session again the history and the process of the formation of these features the uh, remote sensing everything that we know about planets and most of the what we know about the earth itself is now produced by remote sensing of orbiting um, satellites 
So you have to understand remote sensing um, and also the current, future, past missions that have done the remote sensing to contribute to the knowledge base that we have about water and its formation and also the physical, thermal, and chemical properties that are suitable for habitability or life. The only difference that you will see here, um, number three, Enceladus, you'll see plumes and tiger stripes. Last year you saw plumes, jets, and tiger stripes, but jets, jets are sort of inherent with plumes, and so the word jet was left out of the list. Okay, Mars, of course. We know so much about Mars that you can go to the USGS and get a topo map of the surface. Or there's a site you can go to online and any minute of any day you know the exact weather conditions on the surface of the planet. So, uh, you know, we've been visiting Mars for a really, really long time. We've imaged it from Earth. We've sent orbiters around it, we've sent landers to land on it, stationary ones, mobile ones. However, we're still doing a lot of Mars-related observations because it, of its similarity to Earth and why it does not have life as Earth does now and what conditions led to that particular result for these two planets that are very similar and both in the habitable zone. Of course, the uh, northern polar ice cap is of uh, special uh, interest because of the sublimation of the carbon dioxide uh, during the summer and, it, and how that goes into the atmosphere and then settles back out and condenses during the, during the winter season. Uh, the seasonal changes in the north polar ice cap, of course, contribute to the global weather conditions on the surface of Mars. And the uh, European Space Agency sent the Mars Express in 2003 during the summer solstice transition on the uh, northern polar ice cap and went with three different instruments. And here's an example of why it's important to understand remote imaging and the different kinds of instruments and what they do and, and what can be detected with them. Uh, the uh, mapping spectrometer uh, showed the location and the, and the amount, the composition of the phyllosilicates, and those are produced by massive amounts of running water. Uh, volcanism, uh, the stereo camera, uh, showed that um, there has been much more recent uh, surface volcanism on Mars than we had thought. Recent, astronomically speaking, like within the last 100 million years, when it was thought to have stopped much longer ago than that. Um, and also the Fourier uh, spectrometer, which was uh, detecting the amounts of methane uh, in the atmosphere, which was fluctuating enough that it is thought that there is still ongoing subsurface volcanism uh, on Mars. Uh, there's also, of course, the South Polar Cap and the Mars Odyssey mission uh, imaged that. Um, and it went, it, it was only, this one was only an orbiter, and, but while it was there during the, this, uh, the transition, uh, it saw, it used a Themis to um, look at the jets that were produced uh, during the spring thaw, the carbon dioxide as it sublimates underneath the surface and it produces a geyser that erupts from the surface of the planet and it brings up all the rock and debris and dust with it as the carbon dioxide uh, ends up uh, sublimating into the atmosphere then those the gap the dirt and dust that that came up with it then forms a plume that then drifts over the surface of the planet and you can look at the length of those plumes and the direction of those plumes to tell you what the velocity and direction of the winds are at that point in time. The equatorial regions are uh, estimated to have huge subsurface glaciers that are can, uh, as much as 800 meters thick underneath the surface and they produce these features, these flow features on the surface of Mars which are exactly identical to the flows features that we see here on Earth uh, in the Arctic regions as the glaciers um, move 